Welcome back to Blue Collar Woodworking. I, of course, am your humble host, Stumpy Nubs. And if you watched last episode, you know this guy is Mustache Mike. I know the plan was to have him just on one episode, but everybody started blubbering and crying. My inbox was full of email. They were picketing the Mustache Union out front. It was this whole big thing. Bottom line is, I agreed to let him stick around for a little while longer, and he agreed not to embarrass me. So we'll see how that goes. Say hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. <laughs> and it begins. I don't know about you, but I think this dust collection thing has drug on long enough. It's time to start wrapping things up and moving on to bigger and better things. So fasten your seat belts, make sure your trays are in their secure, upright positions, and don't forget your seat cushions can be used as a flotation device because this ride is about to get bumpy and fast. And if you survive till the end of the episode, your life will never be the same. This brown beauty is the new star of the Stumping Ups workshop because inside that thin wooden shell lies the greatest advancement in dust collection technology since Lawrence of Arabia's white flowing turban. And as much as I would like to take credit for it, the true genius behind the design is dust collection guru Bill Pence. Tell him, Mike. In the last three episodes, we discussed the ins and the outs of Bill Pence dust collection design. So we won't go into it again right now, but in short, he changed the diameter and the angle of the cone, he changed the length and the angle of the inlet, and he added an air ramp on the inside. Those changes greatly increased the cyclone's efficiency, which means you can get much more airflow and very fine dust collection. Now, what Stumpy set out to do was to take Bill's design and adapt it into something any woodworker can build. The result is made almost entirely out of wood, from the cone to the barrel to the air ramp, even the ductwork. I may have had to wipe out a small forest to make everything, but it saved me a bundle. Now, if I could only make a blower out of wood. While the cyclone design is critical, blower selection is just as important. You can't put an undersized blower onto a cyclone and expect good dust collection. It just won't work. That's one of the biggest problems that plague even commercial dust collectors. Even the really expensive ones have undersized impellers or underpowered motors. Now I'm all about finding low cost solutions. So I already own a Harbor Freight blower. Why not use that with my new wooden cyclone? Of course I can't just strap that baby on top. It doesn't have near enough power to run a cyclone. But I figured if one Harbor Freight blower sucked, two would really suck. So, I picked up a second one on Craigslist and started experimenting. Did I burn down the shop and kill us all? Well, if you wait till after this, you'll find out. Stanley made a lot of hand planes, but their most useful by far are their bench plane line numbered three through eight. These are the workhorses, the planes that still get a lot of use even in our modern power tool workshops. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be taking these planes one at a time and talking about how we can get the most out of them and why you should use them in your shop. This week we're starting with the smallest of the bench planes, the number three. Truth be told, it's not really the smallest they ever made. They made an even smaller number two and a smaller yet number one. But those planes are really rare and are much more likely to be displayed in a case rather than used on your bench. The number three is a smoothing plane and one of my personal favorites. It's short, it's narrow, and it's easy to control, which is important in a smoother. Because sometimes when you're planing a board, the grain will change. And to get a good cut, you want to work with the grain and not against. So a small smoother allows you to maneuver around and take a super thin shaving, which will give you a surface that just can't be matched with any type of sandpaper. All planes should be kept sharp, but a smoother like this should be the sharpest in your collection. For that reason, I think it's a good idea to upgrade the blade to one that will take a better edge, like our modern steels. Maybe a replacement hock or pinnacle blade for like a $35 investment. That'll turn a good plane into a great tool that'll be a pleasure to use. Want to impress your friends? Then just go to stumpynubs.com and click on the tab that says Stumpy Store. There you'll find plans for many of the projects you see on Blue Collar Woodworking and you can help support the show. I have to say, I was a little worried about what would happen when I tried this out. Don't get me wrong, I'm a guy who owns at least a dozen denim shirts, so I like to live on the edge. But I was afraid if I fired these two blowers up together, it would create some kind of vortex that would suck the mustache off Mike. 
So I asked Bill Pence, and he advised me against it. Actually, he didn't advise me against it, because he probably knew I was going to do it anyway, but he advised you against it. That's because he said that there's the potential for one blower to supercharge the other, causing them to overheat, burn up, maybe even cause a fire. He suggested that if I was going to do it, I carefully monitor the motors and then restrict the airflow to prevent them from overloading. So here's what I did. I really took my precautions here. In fact, I rewired the entire workshop and had a new sub-panel installed so that I could have these two blowers on separate circuits. That and I had this new industrial deep fat fryer to put in, but that's beside the point. The real point is the Harbor Freight motors are rated at about 20 amps apiece. So I put a blast gate up on the top so that I could restrict the airflow and keep them at a good 16 to 18 amps. But look what happens when I turn it on. When I turned on the first blower, it ran at about 12 amps. Then when I turned on the second blower, it boosted the first one up to about 15 amps, and the second ran at about 11 amps. I was expecting the two to run out of control, but while one did speed up the other, the increase in amperage was minimal, well within the safe limits. Now, Bill did say that he knew of examples where people had burnt up their motors, so why didn't it work for them while it did work for me? I don't know. But like any responsible host, that's not going to stop me from some wild speculation. I figure that there are some key differences between my Harbor Freight blowers and the jet blowers in the example that Bill gave me. You see, jet blowers have larger impellers than Harbor Freight blowers. Harbor Freights are about 8 inches. And the Harbor Freight blower has a 5 inch inlet instead of 6. So it's already restricted a little bit. I don't know. Maybe that's the cause. Maybe it's the not. I'm going to keep monitoring them for a while, use it in the workshop, and we'll see what happens. But so far, I am really impressed. This thing sucks. It moves a lot of air, and as long as it doesn't burn down the workshop, I'm going to be very happy to use my new Frankencyclone. Let me tell you, I wouldn't hesitate to say it's the most efficient wood cyclone ever built by someone with a name that rhymes with bumpy rubs. <laughs> You're making me blush. If you want to build your own wooden cyclone, we're going to be putting up construction details, photos, all kinds of stuff at StumpyNubs.com in the coming weeks. So check it out once in a while and soon we'll have those details there for you. Now, if you don't want to build a wooden cyclone but you need good dust collection, we have something else you're going to want to see right after this. If a cyclone is the heart of the dust collection system, the ducts are the arteries. If one of these suckers plugs up, you're as good as dead. We put a lot of work into building our own wooden ductwork, and I thought you might enjoy a quick tour now that we have them mostly installed. The wooden cyclone services one side of the shop, and I tried to get creative on the type of transitions I used. In some places, I just had to get metal stovepipe, but in others, I used simpler items, such as plastic containers. You can find these at Walmart. They're two quart plastic containers that are used to mix paint and they're really stiff. They fit a six inch hose and they're tapered at the end so they work great to make quick releases, couplers, all kinds of things. Of course you saw in the last episode how we made our own 45 degree Y's and ducts and that's just what we did to feed from the cyclone over to this bandsaw. At the bandsaw, we made the first of our six inch to dual four inch adapters. This is made with blast gate so that we can get upper and lower dust collection for the bandsaw. The Clearview Cyclone connects right above the radial arm saws and it goes to the next transition. This six inch to dual four inch transition with blast gates is so we have upper and lower dust collection on our peninsula. That services two table saws and a router table. And soon we're going to have overhead dust collection and blade guard installed. So stick around for that. There are lots of spots in the shop where we added 45 degree Ys with homemade plugs so that we could expand our dust collection later on. That's very important because it's difficult to change things once you install homemade ductwork. Up above we have our homemade air filtration unit and this thing is fantastic. It circulates all the air in the shop in just a couple of minutes and we installed a meter so that we can set the timer and just walk out of the shop at the end of the day and have clear air when we come back. 
Over on this side of the shop, we have a complex transition because it services a lot of machines. Here we made another 45 degree Y. We've got homemade six inch blast gates. We've got a six inch reducer and we've got a quick release that we made from another container. I know this might not look great, but let me tell you, it works very well and it's a lot cheaper than buying six inch fittings. You'll notice the six inch flex hose that we have throughout the shop. We try to use as little as possible, but you just have to have it in some places, especially where there's difficult turns to make and to connect machines. We got our six inch flex hose from Win Environmental. They're a fantastic company. You can find them online. They have super high quality flex hose and the price is the best we found. Over here is another complex transition that we built so that we could take one six inch line and turn it into four four inch lines. Of course, these aren't all open at one time. It's to give upper and lower dust collection for the drill press, for the router table, and for this bandsaw. If you've got a single stage collector, stick with the four inch PVC ducts. If you've got a powerful cyclone, you need to move up to six inch ducts and that can be expensive, especially in the fittings. So making your own wood duct work is a good answer. Now we're gonna get some pictures and some construction details of all of our fittings, our blast gates, our elbows, everything that we made for our duct work up onto stumpynubs.com in the next few weeks. So check it out. Let's face it, making our own tools might be fun. It might be less expensive. It might even make us feel like masters of the woodworking universe. But nobody is going to turn down a premium, commercially made tool if they had the chance to own it. So when the guys at Clearview Cyclones got a hold of me and started going on and on about how they're fans of the show and how everything I do is art, I said, guys, come on, you're embarrassing me. You can just send me one of your sweet, sweet Cyclones as a token of your appreciation. Obviously that might be a huge misrepresentation of how it came about, but the bottom line is the Stumpy Nubs Workshop is the proud owner of the only commercially made Cyclone that incorporates the designs of Bill Pence. And while some people may think a 400 square foot wood shop is a bit too small to need two full size Cyclones, we decided to mount the clear view next to Stumpy's wooden ones and see how they would get along. Before I started to learn about what goes into good dust collection, I only knew one thing about Clearview Cyclones. These suckers are awesome. I mean, look at it. It's made out of plastic. You can see the big dust tornado inside as it works. Of course, this isn't just any plastic. This is the same stuff that police make their riot shields out of. And since I once threw a tape measure at a policeman with a riot shield, I figured it's a good test to try and suck one of these up in my Clearview. What more do you need to know? If it can suck up a tape measure, it can suck up your sawdust and the fine stuff that really no other collector on the market can even touch. So for that, it's one of my favorite things. The guys at Clearview aren't just fans of the show, they are fans of the fans of the show. So they set up a special discount code just for blue collar woodworking viewers. If you decide to buy anything from clearview.com, Go get the code from our website first. You'll save a ton of money. Find everybody's favorite fat little woodworker on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And read his hilarious weekly woodworking blog at stumpynubs.com. Now the real question is, which is better? The Stumpy Nubs Franken Cyclone or the Clearview Cyclone? Come on, let's be serious. A homemade tool is never going to be as good as a commercially manufactured one. I love my Clearview Cyclone and I'm very happy with my wooden cyclone. Either one is way better than any single stage collector on the market. In fact, a good way to compare is if you know what is here, when you turn them on, the Clearview has so much suction it actually compresses the six inch flex hose. And the wooden Franken cyclone does the same thing. So the bottom line is this, if you've got the budget and you want the best dust collection you can get, buy a Clearview cyclone. These babies are awesome. Don't waste your time with one of the other brands that don't have that special technology that Bill Pence developed. Now, if that's not in your budget, you might consider building one of our wooden Franken Cyclones. 
and putting a clear view blower on the top. Then you'll have the best of both worlds, a great cyclone design and enough power to run it. And if that's not in your budget, well, you might consider our dual blower option. But if you do, consult an electrician, because I'm not going to be there with a garden hose when you burn the shop down. You ever feel like the whole world's closing in on you? Like everything is piling up and no matter what you do, it's all going to come crashing down. No, I'm not talking about being a father. I'm talking about woodworking sales. Shame on you for thinking the former. Now go hug your child while I talk about the latter. It used to be a big deal when a new sale started. You'd get one of those colorful, glossy ads in the mailbox and you'd run straight to the bathroom to read it. Every page would be filled with stuff that you wanted and could maybe afford if you would just cut back the family on non-essentials like milk and eggs. Nowadays, all that has changed. I get some sort of tool sales flyer in the mail three times a week, and even in the email three times a day. And those are just the ones that my spam filter misses. Woodcraft is having an early spring sale right now. Rockler is having a late winter sale. Every day is another sale of the century at Harbor Freight. It's enough to tempt any woodworker into overspending himself into undereating. So here's what you do. Take all those flyers you get in the mailbox, print out all those emails you get, Get a big pile of them, at least 50 or 100. Keep the pile messy, crumple some of them up and then half smooth them out. Now go over to your favorite tool store and pick out whatever you want. Don't worry about the price, you're not gonna be paying it anyway. Take the item up to the counter and say you saw it for 10% less somewhere else. Then pull out your pile of ads. Drop half of them on the floor as you do and then get down on all fours and start digging around trying to find the ad. Do it as absent-mindedly and pathetically as possible. This works best if the store is really busy. If the clerk doesn't give you a discount, kick it up a notch. Do some mumbling, maybe drool a little, fart if you can. You want to look pathetic. Before you know it, the clerk will be so embarrassed, he'll let you make up any sale price you want. Then you can sit back and have a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. Don't forget, your seat cushions can be used as a flotation device because this ride is about to get bumpy and fast. That was a lot of metaphors. Now, what's up, stump? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat>